How's it going, guys? I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Uh, today is obviously Mother's Day, and I just wanted to take a moment to wish all the moms out there happy Mother's Day, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, last week, we had a great finish. There was a lot of opportunity, a lot of action in the market, a lot of pullbacks on recent IPOs, uh, and with that, gave some great opportunities for rebounds. Uh, we also had Uber and a sympathy trade off of Lyft. I think that's going to be uh, very active this week. Who knows what's going to happen, especially with a little bit more China, China news this uh, this weekend. So we're going to have uh, and continue to have a lot of range in the market. So the key is really identifying uh, what type of setups make sense for you. You don't need to trade every single stock out there. You don't need to try to trade every single stock out there. There is a edge, and then there's just trading to trade. And we've been talking about it a lot recently in webinars and uh, intraday. We've done a couple mic sessions uh, around 1, 2 p.m. just to kind of recap some of the trades that uh, happen during the day and where there is an edge and where there is not. And... A lot of times you'll find yourself probably pushing buttons when you don't really need to be. Uh, each trade should fit into a particular category, right? Was it a breakout style play? Was it failed follow through momentum? Was it ABCD type setup? Was it uh, late day fader? Whatever it may be, whatever and however you categorize them, you know your setups. And if you don't, you need to establish that over time. And you know that can be done without real money. Uh, especially if you're just trading out, you can start paper trading, obviously, and then slowly get in there with 100 shares and 200 and 500 and 1,000 and, and continually scale up from there. But you need to find out what jives with your personality, what you're good at. And when you do that, you can start to um, take each of the setups that you've found success with and at least identify them. And then as you start trading other names, from here on out, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. Each time you think about pushing the buy or short button, it should fit into one of those categories. And if it doesn't, then take a step back until it does. And that's the difference between trading to trade and you know, actually having some type of edge. And one of the things that I've noticed, and I'm going to talk a lot more about, but when I start when I either have a loss or when I start to trade poorly, I realize that I get patient and I anticipate breakouts, squeezes, continuation, etc. on the trades that fail 80 to 90% of the time, right? So we've talked a lot about momentum trades and kind of uh, how to anticipate the failed breakout. We just did a YouTube video on it this week, which I highly suggest you look at. But I've noticed that weakness in my trades at times after I either have a decent sized loss or when momentum's all over the place and I keep on missing the big moves and I really want to catch that, that big move and not necessarily trying to force the trade, but just trying to beat the system where 80 90 percent of the time that breakout is going to fail so you know although it's you might be up at times and you might think you have the right idea more often than not that trade is going to fail and if you find yourself trading those you need to recognize it and you need to quit it otherwise you're going to get frustrated you're going to get annoyed and you're going to lose 80 to 90 percent of the time anticipating that breakout so uh, I've, I've tried to be a broken record in the room, uh, mainly because we are in that market right now where you do need to know what you own. You do need to know what you're trading. There is a period of time, and we go through cycles, right, where you could have bought BBTH, you could have bought ATOS, you could have bought SLNO, you could have bought AKTX, and have no idea what the heck was going on, and you could have doubled, tripled, quadrupled your money. Uh, you know, it was an algorithm that was going across all the trades. We had this huge day over here on ATOS around the same time SLNO had a huge move and around the same time AKTX had a huge move. We also had BPTH. We had numerous others 
back to back to back to back. So you see that, and sometimes you miss them. Sometimes you make a little bit of money on them. But if you don't pull back, if you don't recognize when that momentum has failed, when the momentum has slowed, then you're going to continue to be firing at the 80 to 90 percent failure rate of breakouts on these particular names. And you're going to bleed your account. You're going to get annoyed. You're going to be get upset. And you're going to question whether or not you can even do this. So realize that. And also, once again, identify what type of setup you're trading. If you can't answer that, if you don't know where it fits into a category, whether or not it's the breakout, whether it's fail, fall through momentum, whether or not it's uh, it hit resistance first yesterday's uh, resistance, whatever it may be, you know where, for example, the TVTY example that I used on uh, that I posted on Twitter this weekend, it ran into Thursday's resistance on Friday. It ramped up into Thursday's resistance and then it unwound. If you can't place that into a category, you don't have a trade. And so that's, for me, that was a failed fall through momentum setup. And that's why I was confident with the trade. And if I do lose on it, it's okay because 10 to 20% of the time, I probably will lose on that setup. However, if I'm anticipating the opposite, then you should start to expect to fail 80 to 90% of the time. So what do we got on watch this week? Uh, first and foremost, WPRT. WPRT was a really nice breakout on Friday. I don't know why there's two candles here. I think it's just because it's the weekend and DAS is bugging out. But we had a great consolidation period. You can see here that it basically ramped up in the morning, consolidated, came back, held around VWAP, and then started to make a nice little ramp towards the close. So what I'd be looking for is to come back and potentially retest towards this level, towards this prior support level when it came back towards the 3, 315 level before pushing into the close. Did a nice consolidation day. It started to find a base, two tens. And so if it's going to continue and it's going to stay in trend, I, I personally prefer it to stay over 215 range, risk off a 210, and then anticipate maybe a, a 225, 230, 250 type breakout. Great volume. Uh, the daily chart's great. It's been a, a while since this thing's ran. Um, and it, it could be one of those uh, situations where it's starting to form a reversal off of the lows. Um, so I don't think we have really any, any big resistance. If we can stabilize around this level, you can see that we are hitting a little bit of uh, chart resistance right here. But... After that, I mean, we've got a lot of room uh, back up to maybe the 280 range uh, area before it starts to hit any more resistance. So we'll see what happens with that. AVP, uh, this one is once again consolidating and potentially setting up for a breakout. I would compare this one to the CFMS trade that we made. CFMS, if you guys uh, watched or listened to the free scan last weekend, that was a swing trade of mine. So it had a nice consolidation period, and then I liked how it basically went down, flushed everybody out, and came back and closed strong. And then that next day, it closed pretty well. So my goal was to buy weak opens that day versus 250s. So that's exactly when I started the swing, and it was very nice. It broke out over the threes, kind of anticipating that move. Now, you can't anticipate with a lot of size. It's just an idea at the time. You can... You can trade anticipatory size, uh, but once again, you, you have to assume that it's going to fail. And if you assume that it fails, then you don't want to be in there with too much size too soon because otherwise you're going to act emotionally and you probably stop out and then it ends up going. So the reason I show you this is because it's the same thing as AVP, right? We're anticipating maybe a, a 325, 330 break. There's a good chance that it will fail. It's failed one, two, three, four times uh, in this general area. Maybe, maybe, maybe three times on the 330s, but this one counts two. So four times. This is the fifth time it's testing. If it goes, it's going to go 350, maybe 380 in my opinion, maybe a little bit more. Uh, 
you have to assume that it's going to fail. However, if it consolidates and it holds a relatively weak open, maybe 10 to 15 cents down, maybe 315s, 310 max, and starts to come back, I'm interested in anticipating it. I do not care about sizing into it unless it breaks over and confirms over 340, meaning I want to see it break through, maybe go 347, 350s, come back and base, base it, say 342, 343, whatever it may be, I want it to hold 340s. We've seen this a lot on, you know, we've got these great breakouts and I think there was uh, AETI was a, a nice, this is an intraday example, but you know, you've got these moves where they actually break that prior top, right? This prior top being 155 and it breaks the 155 and hits 159. So everybody gets excited, acts with emotion, but at the end of the day, it was a big exit candle with 468,000 shares and it completely unwound. However, if you waited for it to prove that it wants to hold now over the 155 level, you would have never sized into it. You would have never been long and you would have been a lot safer. So that's the thought process here on AVP. Rather than anticipate it, get long, get long, get long, and then it fails and you stop out with the emotion right before it actually breaks out, let it prove to yourself that it's going to go. And this is an example of where I say, hey, I'd rather buy higher than have too much too soon and be a little top heavy. So. SPWR, really nice one on uh, on Friday. I was there a little bit, but um, I looked at it. 740, 750, 760, 770, 780. And uh, the only time that I got involved was uh, actually on these dips over here, kind of anticipating more breakouts. So I traded it maybe for 10 cents. <clears throat> but uh, I was a little late to the game and I just I just I didn't want to chase it and it just kept on going so anyway long story short love the volume nearly 8 million shares I'd be looking for a pullback around the 810 range uh, if it starts to stabilize then ideally it, it keeps on going maybe retest and breaks um, Friday highs however if it gaps up and it goes 835 840s and it just kind of hits a wall then I'd be looking left to predict the right and assume that maybe it's hitting a wall again. It hit Friday resistance and it's likely to pull back. So that's how I'd be looking uh, at that trade. CFMS, nice consolidation. Uh, you can see it come back, test, ramps up, comes back, test. That's what you want to see. That's good for longevity. When stocks go straight up, you start to see those huge red candles, right? You want stocks to ramp, pull back, Filter out any traders, filter out anybody that wants to sell, ramp up, pull back, etc. So, uh, right now, I still like all week opens as long as the, the 350 level holds. Um, but if it starts to speed up, if it starts to uh, hold below VWAP, so for right now, you can kind of see it's pretty much held VWAP on the way up, uh, plus or minus a few cents. I'm not talking about, you know, oh, it broke you know, time to panic. I'm not talking about that. I'm referring to let it kind of test. And if it starts to peak out at that point, I would shift to more of a, a short side bias. But for now, as long as it consolidates and keeps on kind of trending like this, this could go for 450 before it starts to pull back. Um, ZYNE, I think we're going to be close to a pretty nice move here. It's been consolidating for quite some time. Um, I was swinging this for, for a while, I think maybe two or three Sundays ago. Um, you know, you guys probably remember the mid eights and then the nines and so on and so forth. It's really had that uh, enough of a pullback where if anybody wanted to sell, they'd be out and it's probably just investors left and shorts. Um, so what you can see here is once again, the same thing as AVP, the same thing that I was talking about on AETI. You've got a lot of daily resistance here. So if and when it goes, it's going to be a, a maybe a 1350 to 15, you know, 1415 breakout. You can assume that it's going to fail each time. And I, I don't mind taking that trade. Um, but for right now, as long as 1270s, 1280s hold and it rallies back, I'm interested in anticipating that 13 push 
small. Um, however, if it gaps up a little bit and it just hits a wall right into that prior resistance, so you know this day was 1290 highs, this day was 1291, um, and you know, it's pretty 1289, 1309. You can see that every time it, it kind of pushes towards 13, it has trouble. So as long as it stays under that level, no matter how many times it, it does test it, I think that there's a good chance that uh, it could have uh, a, a nice pullback in the event that it gaps up, stuffs into the 13, and then pulls back. Um, but for right now, I don't have a very, very strong bias. I just know we're close to something. Um, I love how it's been setting up. I love how they're, they've been kind of flushing everybody out and then trapping. So I'm keeping it on radar. It's kind of settled down the last few days compared to the other days where it had really, really big range. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's time for a breakout. So you may kind of think that that's a little bit indecisive as far as which way it could go. And the reason for that is if you look at CVNA. Same kind of style. We're flirting with a really, really big breakout on the daily. Huge, huge, huge move. It looks like it's kind of teetering, teetering, teetering. And then we have a major, major range day. So point here is that I know we're close to probably a buck or a buck 50 move on ZYNE. I just don't know which way we're going. So I want to be prepared. I want to know what levels matter. And if I can do that, if I am prepared, if I can be ready for it, then there's a greater chance that I can actually nail it. So, you know, right here, CVNA, if I was looking at it on the on the daily chart and I had it on scan prior days, you know, I'd be looking at weak opens versus 70s or maybe gap ups versus 74. I know there's a trade close here. And then it finally came on on Friday and, you know, you you know that there's been a lot of consolidation. Finally, people are, are in there. And, and, and being patient, waiting for it to break out, and then it fails, and then you get that huge, huge unwind. And so with that said, ZYNE, we're either going to be you know, 13, 14, 15 soon, or we're going to be back under you know, 12s and maybe into the 1150s. So um, just main point, be familiar with the chart. You can kind of see similar. You know, we're, we're over here at this uh, resistance back from June of 18. So with that said, KTOS, um, this was a beautiful one. The goal on scan Thursday night was a week open for continued breakout. Even if you miss this out of the gate, which obviously this is hard. I mean, you either, you either were there or not. And, and typically I don't really like to just, you know, chase right out of the gate like that, but you let it come back, retest versus VWAP, confirm and look for dips where the risk on VWAP. And that would have worked pretty nicely. So I'd be looking for the same thing. Um, and then I'd be looking likely for uh, some type of pullback soon. But ideally, it has a magnet towards 20. And uh, then we can see what goes on from there. Uh, and once again, just to remind you in the middle of this, I'm not looking to trade all of these. These are all types of uh, breakouts, things that I want to be familiar with. And then come Monday morning, I look at, okay, what's moving? What has volume? Uh, liquidity is very important to me. I don't like to trade low float type stocks without, you know, major, major momentum. Um, so I want to get the best of the best. Uh, and with a lot of liquidity, that gives me an edge because I know that moves are going to be a lot more natural rather than knee jerk reactions from, you know, a newsletter or somebody, somebody saying buy, sell, etc. So uh, ECPG has been steady the last couple days. I mean, it's pretty monster move. Um, it consolidated a little bit into the close on uh, Friday. Uh, right now, I would assume that it might continue on, go 38 plus. Um, but I do think we're going to have a little bit of a pause soon. So what I'd be looking for is basically um, some type of, I guess Swab might be a good example of it, uh, some type of move where either there's a week open and it ramps back and it fails on red to green or look for a move like this where it just kind of fades off and then breaks under prior support. So you can kind of see if you drew a line across the 5150s, this was a prior top, then it became the base for the most part twice. And then after that breaks, then I'm interested in the potential pullback. Um, but right now ECPG, 
it literally moved 28 to almost 38, 28 to uh, 37. Nine dollar move uh, two days, decent volume, but still relatively thin. So I will definitely be looking for some type of either gap up push towards 37, 37.20s, and then fade off, or let it run, let it get 38, 39, do whatever it wants, and then look to just join the the pullback um, later on. But I'm just thinking that it's going to pause in the 35, 36 range. I'm not thinking that, you know, we're going back to 30. This is not a situation like that. I don't think it's like a, uh, you know, a momentum stock that's gone crazy that needs to pull right back. No, uh, I think that it just needs to potentially pause for a couple moments, consolidate for a couple days, and then maybe head higher. Just like ATNX, if you guys were familiar with that, had a huge move and it offered a nice flush out the next day, but not looking for a home run here. Just looking for a, a highly... Um, good reward to risk type ratio and then cover it move on potentially look to join the trend again um, ATNX is a perfect example of that Suave higher the better at this point I mean somebody's got to be bent uh, I, I'm, I don't really have a, a major plan here I just know I want to watch it because there's a probably a, a $10 share trade coming here uh, soon um, so whether or not we go 60, 70 first, we'll see as long as 55 holds, I think that, you know, we could continue to, to keep on ripping, but, uh, I'll be just looking to find some type of edge on failed follow through momentum or something like that. Uh, JFIN, same thing, you know, there's not much you can really, uh, figure out with, uh, with the, the range right now. Uh, yesterday or Friday was the first day that it IPO'd, um, relatively thin name. Some do nothing the next day and some do a lot. So if this pulls back, consolidates around mid 14, 15s, I would absolutely love to get a second day out of this and maybe go, you know, 19, 20, 25, something crazy like that. Uh, but you know, just keep in mind CRTX, I borrowed, <laughs> I borrowed on uh, Friday and um, I was, uh, a little, not nervous, but I just, you know, I'm, it didn't really fit into a category. So I ignored the trade, but literally nobody was home right out of the open. Um, so in hindsight, it would have been nice to put on a few there, 34 sixties. There was a bid there pre-market. I debated it, but, um, like I said, it just didn't fit a, a category and I was trying to, to trade properly. Um, so anyway, with J, JFIN, you've got to assume that, you know, it very well could do exactly the CRTX way and not show up and just unwind. And that's perfectly fine. But based on how it traded, you know, I had a nice little setup over here and it also had a nice, uh, another nice ABCD setup over here. Based on the way that it traded, I am interested, but I just know that it's going to be a very, very thin trade. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, when, when I was trading this on Friday, uh, you know, you had to be on offers and, and you literally would get swiped uh, 70 to 80 to a dollar above the bid. You know, at times it went 1450 by 1580s and I was filling 1580s or 1650s or whatever. Um, and uh, so just be aware uh, that, you know, if you are trading these, your edge is actually having those wish orders out there. Um, AWSM, so kind of shifting gears a little bit at this point. Uh, these are, uh, I'm going to start to look for, um, or at least with uh, AWSM and a few of these other ones down here, um, I'm looking for failed follow through momentum. So in a situation like AWSM, you, know, you don't need to get into it right at 930, 931. It's, there's there's going to be enough range here, but I'd be looking for uh, higher the better and use the left to predict the right. And ideally we get some type of morning action, maybe another PR or something like that. You know, these guys are not strangers to, to the whole pump method. You know, they've, they've done it before. There's been a lot of momentum. They've trapped shorts before and they usually stick around for a few days. As you can see over here, um, sometimes they support themselves with PR. So there's a good chance that maybe we hold tomorrow within a 20 cent range and then they put out a PR for Tuesday. They squeeze everybody out and then we get the trade. So just be aware of it, be ready for it, but let it, let it run first. Let it, let it 
do its thing rather than jump in front of it because I think that that's why it held pretty well. It's just because everybody's anxious to be a part of the trade and uh, didn't wait for uh, things to settle. Uh, ATNX, uh, nice breakout. I'm going to be watching uh, potential um, continuation here. Uh, I think that it could maybe be a, a full trend reversal and actually uh, hold for quite some time. Uh, ADVR, uh, another recent IPO. Uh, AVDR, excuse me, um, finally broke out of the trend. It may come right back tomorrow, but it looks pretty good uh, as far as how it consolidated. So I'd be looking at dips versus probably 1480s range. As long as 1480s holds, I'm interested. Um, SOLY, this was a swing uh, trade idea. I sold uh, into the uh, close some. I did hold a little bit over just in case, but uh, the, the thesis uh, on the last free scan, it might have been two scans ago too, <coughs> but the thesis was into this uh, data on Saturday, there might be you know some type of momentum. Kind of took a long time for the trade thesis to come together, but it did. Uh, TVIX, if you guys don't know what an ETF is, start there. Uh, it's not a trade for, for most people, but um, you know, we might be gapping up major tomorrow with the China news. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, but it's been a really nice trade, uh, leaned on it on Friday based off the market kind of consolidating. Uh, um, this is the one that I'm never trying to find the top on. If I, if I am shorting into strength, <clears throat> it's minimal size. Uh, most times, uh, I realize that I'd rather be a dollar, two dollars late because there's still going to be two or three more dollars downside uh, versus the days that you step in front of it and it's up two and it goes seven. Uh, you're thankful that you didn't uh, try to find the top because there's so many factors that go into this thing, um, especially with uh, you know, tariffs and China news around the corner and any tweet that may come out. So it's always important to uh, not fight these things and uh, only trade if you know what, what you know is going on. SYMC. Higher the better. Um, again, switching gears here, looking for a morning ramp and potentially get into, trying to get the thing here. Oh, that's why, SYMC. There we go. Uh, I had sync. But uh, in, a, in a perfect world, we get some type of uh, push towards this prior resistance here, uh, which is right in the 2030s range. Um, I'm not sure that that happens, but uh, if not, I'd be looking basically the 1920s here. If the 1920s hold, then maybe we have some type of rally. If not, I'd be looking to risk based off of 19, probably 50s and look for the fade back. AMRX, ideally into the uh, single digits, higher the better. Uh, maybe push towards the, the 1060 resistance here. You can kind of see if you draw a line across. Um, it was a base here, base here, consolidation, peaks here. So I want it to push towards the 1060s, fail, and then look to join the trend. TBTY, same thing we've done the past two days. It's been a great short in the room. Uh, I posted the video on, or excuse me, the um, chart that I traded, failed fall through momentum on Instagram. So you guys can check that out, uh, but also went over it on the video on Saturday. Um, but again, perfect failed follow through momentum, uh, in a situation like this, I would be looking for 1940s, 1950s, uh, ideally, and then fade off. And if I short before that, I'd probably be risking to that just because it's the prior chart resistance. CVNA, we kind of touched upon it, but, uh, you know, there's a very good chance that this could completely unwind. And then there's also the good chance that it could go right back to 70. So. Uh, I'm going to be looking to join a trend if it does start to unwind and and happen fast, two to three bucks. I'm going to be eager to take that trade just because this is the type that snaps back and can keep on um, going the opposite direction. So, um, you know, CVNA, even though it's pulled back quite a bit, there's still a lot of bent shorts in this. So uh, I don't want to get in a situation where I am too uh, aggressive thinking that this is going to 58 and be up two or three dollars a share and not take it and have it ramp up four to five. 
Last but not least, Crocs uh, very easily can fill this gap down here into the 2150s. Higher the better. The last couple days it's been having a little bit of difficulty. Uh, I had been fading this the, the prior days, but in a situation like this, uh, you know, we're, we're right around a little bit of uh, prior chart support right over here. So I'd like to see it push into that and maybe even get up to the 2380s. Uh, but I still really like the potential for coming in and filling that uh, that gap down here. So there's a good chance that it happens. The volume's been great, and it's still been heavy. Until we start to form a base over VWAP and hold, kind of like it did here, you know how it stayed under it most of the day, and then it started to come back. Uh, if, it, if it stays over VWAP on Monday, then I'm not you know very interested. I'd rather see it kind of ramp up, fail, and fail immediately be under uh, VWAP, in which case I would be patient. So anyway, that's where I'm at uh, for this week. I know we went over a lot of charts, uh, and the, the goal is to go over a lot of charts because you can got to get different feel. I'm trying to hit a bunch of different style trades, uh, w whether it's a, a breakout, fail follows from momentum, continuation type plays, um, and you know by, by 9 a.m., when I get on the, the broadcast and on the mic in the morning, I've, I've kind of chiseled that down to about uh, three to five main watches. Usually two or three from scan and then maybe another two max of three from pre-market action. So hope to see you guys all in the room tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the, um, throughout the rest of the weekend, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions. And again, don't forget to uh, check out the YouTube video that we did uh, last week on failed breakouts.